Hey everybody, this is Brian and this is the 32nd Flutter tutorial. Today we're going to be doing a little bit different. I know we've kind of gone through checkbox radios and the switch, which all follow almost the exact same design pattern. We literally could have just changed one word, uh, checkbox radio switch, and it would have been the same darn thing. So today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to cover slider, which is actually set up a little bit differently. And we're going to cover, where is it? It's going to take me a minute to find it here. Of course now I can't find it. It's the linear progress indicator did i pass it already there it is right here the linear progress indicator basically a progress bar so we're going to cover both of those today all right so let's just jump right on in here i'm going to import the material package for dart we need this for our material design widgets i'm going to set up our basic code pattern here we're going to have our main function We're going to extend a stateful widget. And we're going to extend the state of that stateful widget. And in here, we're going to say run app. This is what actually starts the application up. I'm going to make a new material app and the home parameter is going to be a new my app so we're just gonna make an instance of our class here all right so now that we have that I'm gonna actually create our state here and in our state you guessed it we have to do our build function. All right, so I've had a few questions about why this is the way this is. Um, so we'll kind of break it down a little bit. We need our import, obviously, for the material design package, these widgets that we're working with. This is all material design. Um, the main, obviously, is where our starting point is, which we call run app. Then we're creating a new material app, which actually wraps in a lot of the material design and the things that we need. From there, we need a state full widget because we're going to track state. When we quote unquote track state, we're just tracking that something changed and we want to see those changes. Now, the difference between a stateful widget and state is minute but major. And I know that's a complete contradiction. Stateful widget means that something in the widget will change. State is the thing that actually changed inside of the stateful widget. So while the stateful widget itself is not changing, the state is changing. The difference between a stateless widget and a stateful widget is the stateless widget does not care about change whatsoever, where the stateful widget, what we're working with, wants to track those changes, which is why we have to call create state. Because we want to say, hey, we have a state, we're going to create it and monitor it. Whenever the build is called within our state, the entire screen is going to refresh, or I should say the parts of the screen that really need to refresh. Um, all of this is kind of held, I want to say, like in memory, sort of. Um, and only the things that changed are really tracked, but then everything's re rendered to the screen. So that's kind of an answer to that. So in our build, we're going to return a new scaffold. Remember, scaffold is just kind of. Uh, well, it's like a scaffold. It's, you know, you ever seen those building scaffolds where they, you know, either build a building or they're, you know, cleaning windows or something. They have to build this structure so people can walk around. That's really what a scaffold is. All right, so the app bar is just our top blue bar here. We're going to set the title parameter to a new text. All right, and then the body, oops, not even there. There we go. So the body is going to be a new container. I'm still kind of outed. I haven't done tutorials in a while. I'm trying to get back into the swing of it because I'm trying to get caught up. Um, really, I've got a couple personal projects. Ooh, that is not what I wanted. 2.0 because why not and for the child 
We're going to do a new column. And then we have an array of widgets for the children. All right, so in here, this is where the magic's going to happen. We've got our array of widgets here, and we're going to say... Slider value is, and we're just going to say zero for now. We need to go up here and actually create our state. Notice this is a double, not an int. And then we have our arm changed here, which is going to be when the slider actually moves around. We haven't added the slider yet, so this takes a bit of imagination. Break that down into our function. And then we've got our set state. We're going to just say value equals the value. So we're updating our state. All right, now let's actually make this work. So there's our slider, and you notice how the default ones are value and on change. So it's very, very similar to what we've seen before. And we're gonna let's break this down so it's a little easier to work with. All right, so slider also takes some other properties. We want a minimum value of 0.0. .0. Remember, it's got to be a double. And a max. And we're going to say 100.0. So let's put that off to the side for a second here. I'm going to put the value in there. So we're going to say slider value is, and then whatever our value in state is. And we're just going to run this out to the device. So once it's run, we'll be able to move the slider around and actually see in real time that text widget will change with the slider value. Uh, what we're going to do next, after this whole thing is actually working, is we're going to put the linear progress bar under it. Um, typically, a linear progress bar goes right under this app bar, but I want it to stand out. And you can actually grab this, and you can see how it kind of changes. Now you notice because it's a double, it's got this 52 dot blah, all this behind it. So we're going to modify this a little bit. We're going to say value dot round. Take care of that. Hot reload should switch it. Yep, sure enough. Hot reload took it into effect. So now we've got a nice min and max and everything in between. So to add to the goodness here, we're going to put our linear progress bar down here. And we're going to tie that into the same value so we can kind of see what's going on. There's our linear progress indicator. Sorry if I call that a progress bar. I'm just very used to doing that. And we're going to save the value. We're just going to tie it into the value that we're using. But we're going to multiply that by 0 0.01. That way we get an actual positive number here. See, nice and smooth. And let's actually say... Let's just grab this. Not sure if we can even do this, but we're going to try it. This may be a spectacular disaster, but I'm pretty sure we can do that. All right, so there is our in all of its glory. So really what the progress indicator or progress bar, if you're from other languages and frameworks, just shows a progress so the user can see. So we would say we're at 0% all the way up to 100. Now the progress indicator, notice 100% is actually a 1.0. Anything less than 1 means it's not there. So this is 56 or 0 0.558, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so just be mindful when working with the progress indicator that you have to give it that. Um, you can't say it's at 50%. You have to say 0 0.5. Pretty simple, pretty easy to learn. Um, Hope you guys found this educational and entertaining. Um, I just like doing this. It's kind of fun.
but uh, if you if you did find this educational entertaining uh, be sure to visit my website voidrealms.com for the source code for this and all the tutorials they're all out on github if you notice any mistakes definitely contribute it helps out quite a bit and it is getting to that time of year where I need to pay for my web hosting. This site and all the tutorials are 100% funded by your donations. That's why there's zero ads on these videos. And I'm trying to keep ads off of them because I think ads on YouTube really suck. So if you've got a few extra bucks, feel free to throw it my way and I will help pay the bills. Thank you for watching.